He's tripped the reactor. This place is about to go supernova. Do do. Yeah, maybe I should switch weapon. This is pretty cool. I am like, um, I'm more impressed with this game than I thought I'd be when I like heard about it. Because I thought it was just gonna be like a desperate cash grab that just happened to star Bruce Willis. But it's actually a decent little game. It's not something that I would really be into, but I can see the appeal and I feel like it's something where the devs actually made an effort sort of thing. If you see what I mean? Well, should we watch out for those guys maybe? Are we going down there? Oh. Wait, are those gas pipes? Wow, was that like half my health there? Nope. Is that like health around here somewhere? No? Okay, great. But yeah, Tears of the Sun. It's a good movie. Quite like that. Okay, well, these guys are really packing a punch, aren't they? It's a good thing I've got like a billion lives. So yeah, let's sort of stand here and talk about Tears of the Sun. <laughs> So this was like an early 2000s movie, I think, uh, starring Bruce as like a, a gruff commander military guy who has a serious mission to do. He has to like, he's like special forces and they have to evacuate this, is she like Italian? I know, look, it's Monica Bellucci, is it Monica Bellucci? So she's Italian. But I don't know if the character's supposed to be Italian, I presume so. Oh. These guys need a little more lead in their Oh, yes, please. So she's like a, a scientist lady medic, I think. Help, please. Is he talking to himself there or uh, us? But yeah, anyway, she's like a, a doctor lady who's trying to help in this water, uh, water, war torn, like African country, I think it is. Um, and she doesn't want to leave because there's refugees and. Well, not refugees, but yeah, I think they are refugees actually. Because they're fleeing the, the conflict zone. And she doesn't want to leave because she doesn't want to abandon them and her colleagues over, from the aid or agencies. Whatever. I'm really describing this well. 
anyway, she doesn't want to leave. And these special forces are, for some reason, sent in to just force her to leave. And obviously Bruce is there. I think the original idea is that uh, it's, they're just supposed to evacuate her and leave all the refugees and then she somehow forces Bruce, I guess by being pretty, um, to save all the refugees as well. Good work, team. But yeah, somehow she forces Bruce. I can't remember how. I think it probably is just because she's pretty to uh, save all these refugees. And then him and his men do that, but get shot at by evil warlord soldiers as they do it. No, stop playing that copyright music, please. Where are we going? Oh, okay, down there. Okay. It's kind of weird that there's just random music in this game. Like, well, I mean, obviously there's music in games, but like it's just like just random real life songs being played, isn't it? <laughs> like, what's that about? There we go. Yeah, she plays like a, a doctor lady who doesn't want to evacuate, and Bruce is stuck in the middle. And all his men, but I think, don't a lot of them die? I think some some of them die. I don't know if all of them die. I don't think so. But obviously there's a cost for saving all those refugees. Oh, what? My bad. Is that even worth it? I don't think it was. Okay, that's close enough. I don't care about the the rockets. Oh dear. Oh. Yeah, okay, that was expected. But yeah, it's a pretty decent action movie. Drop one on, it's time to jam. Okay, that works. Do we think maybe those have health in? Possibly, no. Seriously, how... How do you stop those? So I've still got unlimited lives on, so we're okay, it doesn't really matter. I don't like puzzles like that, or like challenges like that, because it... It's not really like, not really based on the player's skill, it's more based on like putting a, an unnecessary obstacle in the, the path of the player, if that makes sense. 
Oh. Reminds me of the uh, the enemies hidden around corners in Resident Evil games, in the early ones, where you can't see them because the camera's fixed. And it just like, it always rubs me the wrong way because it feels wrong to challenge the player like that. It, like, if there's no way for you to overcome the obstacle, like, like why are you putting the obstacle there? You know, there has to be some sort of reasonable way for the player to overcome it. I think, anyway. And like with jumps, if you can't see where you're jumping to, like that's not fair on the player. Or if you can't see where you're shooting to, you know. Oh, like that, I've just jumped into nothingness because I couldn't see where I was jumping to. <laughs> But then it is a PS1 game and that's kind of standard PS1 territory, isn't it? Sorry, I should be talking about movies, but um, these last few challenges have been a bit, bit much for me to try and talk whilst doing. Nice. Aha, a checkpoint. Good. Please. Okay, that seemed to work. Yeah, what's what's on? What's next on the list? So yeah, Tears of the Sun. Oh, pretty good. Are these supposed to be robots? No, they must be soldiers. What do they look like, robots? There. Uh, mysteries of a uh, of Bruce with this game. Yeah, after Tears of the Sun. Okay, the whole nine yards. Let's go with that. I've not seen the second one. Is that the whole ten yards, or was it just like the whole nine yards again? Um, the first movie was good though. I really liked that. Nice mix of like Bruce as like the action hero and Matthew Perry as the Comedy sidekick? I don't think no, that doesn't make sense, does it? The Bruce was the sort of the action side of it and Matthew Perry was the comedy side of things. Bruce plays like a a hitman who um is he hiding out or is like he's yeah, he's hiding out from his mob boss enemy or whatever, and 
Matthew Perry recognises him and Matthew Perry's wife isn't very nice and sort of hates him and tries to plot to get Matthew Perry killed and also like stitch up Bruce Willis but then they end up luring the uh, the mob boss to uh, Bruce's house with the help of the, the black guy from I think is it Pop Fiction and the Green Mile. God, I might be being incredibly racist here if I got the the wrong guy. Gonna look so bad in retrospect when I Google this and realise it's a different actor in all three of those roles. But yeah, they. Oh. oh, wrong button. Yeah, okay, not doing well. Oh, not all the way back here. Wait, wasn't there a checkpoint? That's weird. I swear there was a checkpoint. These guys need a little more lead in their tires. I don't know if I should go back to talking about Tears of the Sun now. Um, but yeah, Hong on Yards. Um, they trick some mob, mob people, oh, mob. That people. Um. I'm sorry, it's bad enough when I'm trying to like, do two things at once, but like three things at once, like play the game, talk about the movie, and something else, I don't know, whatever I'm doing. But yeah, whole nine yards. Um, that was pretty good. It's kind of a shame, like that wasn't a more of a thing. Like, is is Matthew Perry in like any of the films? Like, because that sort of dynamic where he's the the comic relief, and you've got the sort of the action hero character or the. the straight man to his uh, comic relief really works, or at least I thought it works. Nice change of pace for Bruce as well, I think. I kind of want to say like, he's stuck making action films, but like when you look at his career, that's really not true. Like He really did do a range of films. I'll come to it later on, but like Death Becomes Her in the, the like late 80s or early 90s. Like he plays like a, well, I probably shouldn't explain it, but I think she plays like a plastic surgeon in that and he's just like this sort of bumbling middle-aged character. Um, he's not an action hero or anything like that. It's literally just like this bumbling middle-aged guy inoffensive and just sort of not really noticeable like completely different to the character he plays in like Die Hard um, or at Tears of the Sun So I've got the Expendables next on my list, but then I don't think that was really the next movie he was in. But I don't give manners, does it? 
Oh. I already have infinite lives, but I, I appreciate that nonetheless. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. Great work, guys. Jesus, look at all these guys. I feel like that probably is the best situation to use one of those smart bombs. Should I try and destroy all these and see if there's weapons in there? No. Just health, I guess. I'll take that. You can jump really high. Like surprisingly high. Lock and load. Oh, okay, that works. Where are we going now? Okay, so yeah, I guess they're like guys in armor. That's not clear. They sound robotic though, I'm just gonna say that. Should we use another missile? I don't know. Or smart bomb, sorry. Okay, what's next on the list? I would say expendable, didn't I? Was he in Expendables 1? I can't actually remember. I know he was in, like... Oh. No! Stop playing the copyright music! Presumably copyright music. Who is that? Yeah, this kind of works, doesn't it? Wow, thanks for that, like, two minutes of music. Wasn't he seen, like, briefly in one of the Expendables, again in the next one, or the, the last one? He was, like, actually in a shootout, I seem to remember that, like... Because I think Army was Army the same. Like he was in it. He was in the the first one as a cameo, and then he got a bigger role than the second one. Maybe I, it's been a while since I've seen those films. Those films are good though. Like just fun, dumb action films. Oh, 
I'm just gonna take that anyway. Oops. Yeah, I probably shouldn't stand so close to those, should I? Okay, so Death Becomes uh, is the next film I'm going to talk about. So yeah, well, I've basically explained, uh, explained, explained, explained Bruce's role in it. Essentially, it's like uh, two women are like really competitive. Um, Goldie Horn is married to oh, Goldie Horn's character is married to Bruce Willis. Oh no, she's dating Bruce Willis initially. Uh, and she has a rivalry with uh, what's her name from 101 Dalmatians a very long time ago um, I can't remember her name Glenn Close possibly is it Glenn Close uh, because they both think uh, watch it and for some reason they they want Bruce. Anyway, they find like a, a a potion that allows them to, or they they meet somebody who gives them a potion that allows them to like live forever and sort of be immortal, but with lo lots of caveats. And uh, part of it is part of it is just them sort of like uh, trying to compete with each other, and Bruce is part of that. Oh, that well, this level's a lot longer than the others. It might just be because I died a lot at the start, though. So who knows? Yeah, Bruce is like a plastic surgeon. He doesn't really seem that bothered about either of them, really. He initially he's in love with Goldie Horn, but then he gives her up for... I'm just going to call her Glenn Close. I'm really sorry if it's not you, Glenn. Oh dear, look at this lot. Uh... God, this is a long one, isn't it? But yeah, he seems to flip between them initially, but then... Well, he says he's like in love with Goldie Hawn's character, but he's not. And he's easily swayed by Glenn Close. But like, it doesn't seem that deep of a, uh, of a relationship generally, so... Oops. I'm just going to skip those guys. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, smart bomb. That is just what I needed. Is this going to be the boss? 
Possibly. I hope so. This level's super long so far. Oh, there we go. Underwhelming boss, isn't it? Just another hel helicopter. Here we come, Tear. So, have we officially strapped one on yet? Like, what do you guys think? Possibly. Possibly. But yeah, Death Becomes her is quite a good movie. I quite like that. Like, it's quite a nice mix of, like, dark humour and it's like really good performances. Okay. That was a long one. <laughs>